Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So on today's episode, we're going to take a look at where the dust had settled with Duskmorn because, well, I mean, maybe we kind of forgot that Duskmorn just ended or just came out, you know, not too long ago. This spoiler season ended. It came out not too long ago, but a couple of things happened in between then and now, but it's interesting to see kind of where things settled, what popular commanders came out of it and what lessons we've learned. Let's jump into it. And we're actually going to start things off in reverse order. So the 10th most popular commander of Duskmorn was actually Marvin Murderous Mimic. Very interesting. 381 decks to its name, which you might think, yeah, that's not a lot actually. And yeah, we are pretty top heavy with this list and things really jump up. But Marvin is a very unique one. It's one that I thought could have gone either way in terms of popularity. Not a lot of just like strictly combo players out there, and this is a pretty combo-centric commander. Let's quickly talk about a 2-2 Ledger Artifact Creature Toy for 2 mana. Has all active abilities of creatures you control that don't have the same name as this creature. It's a very interesting and unique commander. It is one that you probably are going to see a lot of same-z decks around it, though. And uh, yeah, just in terms of synergies, I want to point things out. Uh, Pilly Pala, 88% uh, synergy. Uh, thank you, EDH Rec, for having these amazing numbers. But yeah, this is a card that... Doesn't see a lot of play in other decks, but in this one, it's a high percentage play for it. Pay to untap at one man for any color to mana pool. This is a combo centric card with this commander. That plus Vladimir essentially. Also, farm said Gleaner as well. 85% synergy compared to other decks. We heard this one. Pay to untap. Put a counter on farm said Gleaner. So again, like these combo centric cards that only see play elsewhere makes sense with this commander. And then Cryptic Trilobite, again, like another card that literally doesn't see play very rarely elsewhere. And all of a sudden, like this commander's like, yeah, that, I want that. 65% synergy for this one, a 0, zero Trilobite, enters with X counters on it, remove a counter from it, add Colus Colus. This obviously combos with the Farmstead Gleaner and some other things as well. And you can also, you know, get counters on it. But yeah, giving your commander, giving Marvin Murdersmith those abilities, it's very interesting. But again, it seems like a lot of kind of same Z decks built around it and not too many players out there being like, you know what, I really want to combo with that one. Still, Marvin, good enough for 10th place. Next up, at ninth place, up to 416 decks to its name, we've got Victor Valgavos Seneschal, a 3-3 Heaven Warlock for 3 mana in Orzov. Eerie. Whenever in champ you control, enter as whatever you fully unlock a room surveil to the first time this ability resolved this turn. Second time, each opponent's card's a card. Third time, put a creature card from the graveyard on the battlefield under your control. So it's a commander that you're like, hey, you know what? Let's get a lot of enchantments in. Let's do a lot of crazy stuff with that. So, of course, I mean, it's not too surprising when it comes to the, you know, actual synergies of cards. 74% synergy with Mesa Enchantress. 0 to Human Druid for 3 mana. Cast an enchantment spell. Draw a card. Who knew? Enchantresses are good in Enchantress decks. Doom Lake Giant. 68% synergy for this one. Yeah, Constellation cards are a shoe in for this because you already want to get a lot of enchantments coming in again and again and again. Whenever another enchantment enters the battlefield, hey, creature bones control, get minus one, minus one until end of turn. So a great way to just demolish your opponent's army again, again, and again. And actually with this one, 67% synergy for Waste Knot. This one's down around $2 right now, 2 or $3. Enchantment for two mana. Pwn discards a card that is a creature. You get a 2-2 zombie. If they discard a land card, you get black, black to your mana pool. Pwn discards a non-creature, non-land, you draw a card. So yeah, again, really taking advantage of your commander's ability to for some discards, which is quite nice, but yeah, a, a lot of value to be had. A different kind of Enchantress Commander, essentially, in a way, but yeah, one that isn't going to be the most popular out of that kind of deck type. So, it is interesting to see that this one is on the list, got to ninth place, but still not breaking through those like massive numbers that we're seeing with some of the other Commanders. All right, now let's really step things up. Close to 1,000 decks to its name, 967 to be precise. Eighth place, we got Valgavoth Terror Eater. Yeah, the big baddie from the set. There you go, a 9-9 Elder Demon for nine mana in total. Flying in lifelink, ward sacrifice three non permanents impermanence of a card. You didn't control, you put an opponent's grave from anywhere, exile it instead. During your turn, you may play cards, exile with it. If you cast spell this way, pay life with its mana value rather than pay its mana cost. 
This is a commander that I think is very, very spicy. And again, keep in mind, we are only like less than two weeks out from when this set actually came out. So of course, these numbers are still going to be going up, up, up. It is impressive that this one again at nine mana has players out there still excited about a commander that costs this much to get out and has this big of a presence. Absolutely love it. When it comes to synergy, some interesting cards came up actually. 49% synergy for Mind Crank. Whenever opponent loses life, they put that many cards at the top of the library into their graveyard, which of course then your commander exiles, which is quite nice. But yeah, this card's around $9 or so, but a good synergy play for this one. Three and Dynamo. Yeah, when it comes to mana, you're just like, I'll take mana of whatever kind. Just give me efficiency. Artifact for four, tabs for three, absolutely lovely. 46% synergy for this commander. Breach the multiverse, not too many ways to just like, you know, mass mill. You don't have blue, that's okay though. You can still mass mill with this card. Breach the multiverse, seven mana in total sorcery. Each player mills 10 cards and also get things back too. But yeah, being able to just mill 10 is like, hey, you know what? Give me access to all those cards. Thank you. But yeah. Valgaval Terror Eater, again, a commander that is nine mana. Usually like commanders that are that high in mana value tend to scare a lot of players off. But this one, apparently, players like, you know what? That's spicy enough. I'm building around it. Almost a thousand decks to its name already. Good enough for eighth place. Moving on to seventh place. Over a thousand decks to its name. 1,253 decks. Yeah, there we go. We're getting things going now. Kona Rescue Beastie. A 4-3 Beast Survivor for 4 mana and green. Begin of your second main phase. If it's tapped, you may put a permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. Yeah, this is like, hey, you know what? Let's just cheat some giant things into play. And of course, you know, you could do it, you know, where you're swinging and putting your commander in danger, but you don't need to do that because look at this synergy right here. 81% synergy according to EDH track. We got Spring Leaf Drum, an artifact for a single mana. Tap and untap creature control at one mana of any color. Cool. My commander's a dork now. Great. That's all I care about. You know, just my dork commander can tap right away and all of a sudden just drop something massive into play. Relic of Legends, yet another way to do so. Artifact for three. Tap at one mana of any color or tap and untap ledger creature you control at one mana of any color. So there you go. Being able to actually just turn your commander into well a manador can be absolutely great for you and of course you can cheat and other you know commanders are just cards that are great in the 99 like galta stampede tyrant 55 percent synergy here 12 12 elder dinosaur trample for eight mana in total enters the battlefield put any of your creature cards to your hand on the battlefield this is kind of like the ultimate play for this commander of course like you know spring leaf drum turn one turn two uh i don't know rampant grow turn three kona Tap your Kona, put Galta in play, cheat other massive things in play. Lovely. Yeah, this is a commander that, again, has some spice to it. You can do some interesting things with it. Seventh place finish, 1,253 decks to its name. Moving on to sixth place. We've got 1,356 decks to its name. Uh, Nico Light of Hope, a 3-4 human wizard for four mana in Azorius. Enters the battlefield, create two shard tokens, pay two, tap, exile target, not let your creature control, shard you control, become copies of until they get an extend step, return to the battlefield, under token control to begin next end step. This is a commander, well, there's only so many ways to make shards out there, so it's not surprising to see a lot of synergy with Ephemerate, 73% synergy here. Exile creature control, turn the battlefield under social control, rebound. This is basically like, hey, um, make four shard tokens. Cool. Or, you know, if you have other creatures that do have great ETBs, which you might with this kind of a commander, a great way to use and use those. Speaking of which, Soul Herder, yeah. A one, whenever a creature is exiled from the battlefield, get a counter on it. This can get massive in no time. Beginning of your end step, you may exile a target creature control, turn to the battlefield, under Soul's control. You can actually make all of your shard tokens into this too and just have fun with that. And of course, comes the shards. Yeah, Nico, also another Nico. There you go. Three starting loyalty, enters, create X shard tokens, and some other cool things that you can do with this as well. Might as well make a shard token as well. So again, only so many ways to make shard tokens to fill the board, to get other cool creatures out, to turn all your things into those creatures. A really interesting and spicy commander. 1,356 decks to its name. Good enough for sixth place. Next up, at fifth place, we've got 1,382 decks to its name, the Mind Skinner. Again, when it comes to like certain kinds of commanders that do surprise me when they get pretty you know pretty popular especially for inside a set ones that are like okay this one's like nine mana my goodness okay that one's uh you know pretty popular in the set and then also like mill like oh, okay this is a mill commander yeah it's a very spicy interesting mill commander though 10 one enchant creature nightmare for three mana in blue can't be blocked by source control deal damage to your opponent prevent that damage each opponent mills that many cards it flips the game on its head to say you know what yeah i got a 10 one that's unblockable for three mana 
but I'm milling you instead of actually hitting you, you know, with damage. So there you go. So being able to mill everyone, again, in each opponent at the same time, 10 cards a piece. Lovely. Let's make it even more, though. 71% synergy. Of course, at Brubeck, the Grandriloquent. Uh, stable for, like, any mill deck, essentially. These days, the opponent would mill one of our cards. They mill twice that many instead. 64% synergy for Madden Cacophony. Each put mills eight cards if it was kicked. Instead, each put mills half their library rounded up. That's a good way to really get things going. Or how about Fire Shrieker? Yeah, that's right. Again, a blue deck that's like, you know what? Let's hit hard and hit hard again. Double strike for our commander again. Milling 20 cards. A lot of spice there. 64% synergy. You usually don't see that with blue commanders. The Mind Scanner. Again, a very interesting commander. One that I am not really all that surprised to see. Even though it is a mill commander, it takes it in a really cool, interesting new way. 1,382x for its name. Good enough for fifth place at this point. Next up, we've got Winter Misanthropic Guide, a 3 4 human warlock, 4 4 mana in Jun. Fourth place, 1,506 decks to its name. Ward 2, because Wizard throws Ward and everything. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player draws two cards. Delirium, as long as there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard, each month's maximum hand size equal to 7 minus the number of those card types. Quite lovely. So our opponent's hand size can become, well, very, very, very teeny tiny. And because of that, well, they're going to be discarding cards. So Waste Knot is back with a 68% synergy. This has got to be like the first time for a long, long time that we've seen like, all right, Waste Knot pretty high up there for a couple of popular commanders in a set. Again, I'm not going to read it, but basically your opponents discard things, you get value. Then there's Fate Unraveler. Opponents, you know, draw things. Unfortunately, no value for them, just damage them. So Underworld Dreams type cards. This one's 59% synergy. Liliana's Caress. Again, discard things, no value for you. Enchant for just two mana. Opponent discards a card. They lose two life. 52% synergy for this one. So yeah, basically draw pain, discard pain, discard value for me. Lovely. Winter says, you know what? I get all the value. You lose all the value. Have fun with that. Fourth place, one. 1,506 decks to its name. Moving on to third place. So my goodness, the Jolly Balloon Man. You will be jolly. Your opponents will not be. Third place, 2,179 decks to its name already. A 1-4 Human Clown with haste for three mana in Boros. Pay one tap, create tokens, copy of another target creature control, except say 1-1 one, one Red Balloon Creature Token. It is to other colors and types. Has flying and haste. Sacrifice be an extent, except active as a sorcery. Cool. What matters is, you know what? I can pay one mana and tap and make a token copy of anything I have. This has some, well, very powerful implications and very broken implications. ETBs are very easy to use and abuse, especially one like Village Bell Ringer. 69% synergy, of course, for this commander. A 1 4 human scout with flash that costs three mana. Enters the battlefield, untap all creatures you control. That's all creatures, which of course includes your commander and any mana dorks you might have. So this could be infinite, and essentially just having an infinite number of village bell ringers, you just win. There you go. Panharmonicon, another way to go infinite with a couple of different things as well. Artifact for four. Artifact your creature into the battlefield because a trigger ability burn to control the trigger doubles that up. That can be quite nice, especially when it's paired with, well, something like Zealous Conscripts. 52% synergy for this commander. 3-3 three, three with haste. Human warrior for five mana in red. Enters. Gain control target permanent on turn. Untap that permanent gain haste solve turn. So again, this could actually combo with Panharmonicon plus you know, essentially any kind of a mana rock or whatnot. You got ways to do it. You got ways to win. This is a crazy powerful commander. The Jolly Blue Man will make you jolly. Your opponent's not much so. Again, third place finish, 2,179 decks to its name. But the Jolly Blue Man might not be so jolly in that it's been outdone by a doll that is an uncommon commander, but definitely not an uncommon design. A 1-3 Ledger Artifact Creature Toy for two mana in Boros. Arabella Abandoned Doll. Second place, 2,188 decks to its name. When Arabella attacks, deals X damage each opponent. You gain X life for X a number of creatures you control, power two or less. Tiny creature tribal, absolutely, let's go. So of course, let's go with that. Welcoming vampire, 64% synergy with this one. Two, three vampire flying, whatever, one or more creatures. With power two or less, out of battlefield, you control, draw a card. Triggers only once each turn, a lot of value to be had. Delny, the commander for the tiny creatures, essentially. Streetwise, look at a two, two human scout. Creature control with power two or less, can't be blocked creatures power three or greater. Get your tiny creatures through. More importantly though, if an ability of a creature control with power two or less triggers, triggers social time. Then includes your commander's trigger as well and of course 55 percent synergy for a card like dust to dawn 
Dust destroy all big creatures. Power three or greater. Yours are fine. And also bring all tiny creatures back from your graveyard to your hand with dawn. So yeah, get all the tiny creatures out. Swing away. And with this uncommon commander, do uncommon things. Second place finish, 2,188 decks. But finally, your first place commander from Duskmorn, Marina Vendrell, 2,215 dax to its name. Yeah, this one actually surprised me. I, of course, am a five color fanatic. Many of you out there know that. This is one where I'm like, you know what? It's interesting. It's definitely interesting. Yeah, I could build around it, but I didn't think it was going to explode in the way that it has. Yet yeah, it is quite popular. A 3-5 human warlock for Wooburg, of course. Enter as a really top seven cards in your library. Put all enchantment cards from among them in your hand. The rest of the library already random order. And you can tab to lock or unlock a door of target room you control. Activate only as a sorcery. So, of course, enchantress, but also like rooms involved with it for many players out there. 61% synergy for Sith this Harvest Hand. The ultimate enchantress. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you gain one life draw a card for a two mana creature. This is crazy good. Speaking of a two mana creature, Sanctum Weaver also at 61% synergy. A 0 2 enchantment creature dryad for two mana tap at x mana of any one color x or change you control that is a massive mana dork and of course yeah lots of rooms to be had in this this one just for example 55 percent synergy for smoky lounge misty salon beginning of your first main phase at red red spell only to cast room spells or unlock doors you're gonna be doing that a lot misty salon whenever you unlock this door create an xx blue spirit creature with flying or x a number of unlocked doors among rooms you control that can become quite large so yeah uh marina vendrell the commander for something that we did not know that we would need you know a room commander we did not know that we needed that or even had it a couple of you know weeks months ago whatever it is at this point since we saw that rooms were a thing but yeah a very exciting commander at the top of the list five color fanatics rejoice first place finish 2215 decks to its name and as a little bonus, though, because I did not include the pre-con commanders, let's quickly go through the rankings for the pre-con commanders because these numbers are a bit, you know, just they can be a bit just adjusted slightly because of, you know, it's it's like a combination of people buying the pre-cons and also a combination of people, you know, making the decks online separate from the pre-cons. So their numbers can sometimes be a little inflated compared to the main set commanders. So I'm keeping them separate. That being said, I mean, if you want to, like, compare where they're at compared to the main commanders, you can, of course. Can Corrupted Memory, quite low out of all these, actually. At 8th place, 120 decks to its name. And this one, I think, is pretty interesting. This is like the, hey, uh, Vidalcan Ori, depending on the odd or even. Apparently, players out there don't find it as interesting as I do, though. So, there you go, 8th place. Next up, though, 7th place, we've got Winter Cynical Opportunist. A 2-5 Human Warlock for 4 mana and Golgari. Death Touch Attack, mill 3 cards. And also, G thing into play, you know, at the end of the turn or whatever it is yeah this one also is a very interesting commander but it's kind of interesting to see this one is the face commander and it is one of the most least popular commanders out of all these pre-gun commanders again seventh place finish out of eight 778 decks to its name next up the lord of pain a 5-5 human assassin of menace your opponents can't gain life for five mana in rakdos Group Slug, apparently not the most popular thing out there. Sixth place finish, 828 decks to its name. Whatever player casts their first spell each turn, choose another target player. Deals damage you let mana value to the chosen player. Moving on, the Master of Keys, yet another backup commander. Fifth place finish, 1,385 decks to its name. So again, you can see like the jump is coming with these. A lot of decks built around them. A 3-3, three, three, enters X counters on it, mill twice X cards, and also each enchantment in your graveyard has escape. So there you go. Be able to get your enchantments out of the graveyard, getting things in your graveyard, having a massive flying threat. What's well, not to love about this? Next up, Renmaw, Creaking Nest, a backup commander that actually went ahead of the commander. Again, Winter was the main commander for this, and we said, you know what? No, we're not building around this one. We're building on Renmaw. Fourth place finish, 1,759 decks to its name already. 5-5 five, five, Menace Reach Scarecrow. Enters whenever you play a card with two or more card types. Each player creates a tapped 2-2 two, two Black Bird creature on with flying. Yeah, tokens are good for the rest of the game. So have fun just creating a bunch of birds. Everyone swings with birds. Birds everywhere. What's not to love about that? And of course, yeah, just play a bunch of like artifact creatures or whatever. You can do a lot of fun things with that one. Next up, Zamone Mystery Unraveler. Third place finish, 1,909 decks to its name. 3-3 three, three, Landfall, Manifest right off the top. And then also flip things over. Cheat big things and play off the top of the library. Flip them over for fun. And also just, you know, utilize blink effects too. It's not to love. Aim not to veil piercer. Second place finish, massive jump here. 
3,231 decks to its name already. That is crazy. 2 4 Human Wizard for 4 mana and Esper. At the beginning of rep, keep Surveil 2. Each enchantment card in your hand has Miracle. Its Miracle cost reduces mana, cost reduced by 4. So, yeah, being able to, well, kind of flash enchantments in with that Miracle by drawing on your opponent's turns can be quite nice. But also having that giant cost reduction of 4, that's huge. I mean, if you take advantage of this on every single turn, that is 16 cost reduction in total, which is crazy. A really cool commander again that's like Enchantress, but also Miracle. Love it. And then in first place, though, oh my gosh. Valgavoth might not have been number 1 out of the main set of commanders, but it is definitely number one out of the pre-con commanders. First place finish, 4,023 decks to its name, a 4-4 Elder Demon for four mana and Rakdos, Flying Ward, pay two life, opponent loses life first time during each of their turns, get a counter on it and draw a card. If each trip on the table, basically probably draw three cards, also get three counters on it, players like value. I did not think that this would be the most popular pre-con commander out there. I was wrong, I was definitely wrong. This is a commander that is making a big splash for many players out there. Again, already 4,000 decks to its name. That is absolutely crazy. And with that, this episode is coming to a close. Comment below with your thoughts on it. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Thank you.